Well, we're mega excited here on Salty Lass. Um, the stalking can now begin. Yes, you've guessed it. We've ju we're installing AIS. Everyone, this is a bit of a real-time update. The video you're about to see is a, a little bit behind reality, but not too far. I uh, just thought we'd take this opportunity to bring you up to date on our plans. Recently, you saw us making an outline passage plan in our passage planning book. Um, obviously, with recent events that are going on, that's out the window now. All the marinas are locked down. We can't go anywhere. So we'll bring you up to date on what we're doing in subsequent videos. Um, but the plan to sail around Ireland this year is out the window, sorry. If you're a subscriber uh, to our monthly newsletter, you'll be getting a bit of a bumper newsletter this month. Um, and if you're not a subscriber to it, well, we'll put a link down below in the description. And the subscription option is on our website, not on any other of our social media. It's on the Salty Mass website. So if you want to get our bumper newsletter by the end of the month, um, you best subscribe on the website before the end of the month because that's when it goes out. So with all that done and you up to date now and knowing what's happening, I will just go straight in from here to our feature presentation. Oh, look at that. We've got the M-Track B100. The reason we went for the M-Track B100, the one that you, were, you can see here in this, in this shot, is that we saw somebody else using it on YouTube and they also happened to have a Garmin GPS chart plotter very similar to this. This is a 551, they had a 451 and it worked. So we contacted them and said, works very nicely and uh, can you tell us a few bits of bobs? They did and we thought that's the one for us because if it works for him with his Garmin kit, it'll work for us with our Garmin kit because it's more or less the same Garmin kit. So. We were happy with that. As a bonus, when we stuck it into the Y2K network what we have on board the boat, the B&G chart plotter up in the helm station just lit up like Christmas. It's wonderful. <laughs> we love it. This amazing amount of wires is our jewellery rig um, with the GPS there. Oh yeah, that's really well installed, that GPS antenna. Um, we've got a jewellery rig coming out here. This is the aerial lead, and that's going up the mast. Um, but this is our old Garmin uh, unit, um, and um, as you can see, we've got um, a good variety of um, vessels which are going to collide with us any minute uh, because, of course, we're in a marina. Um, and uh, they're w all within um, the collision um, distances um, and of course we can actually get um, the AIS up on our main um, chart plotter so overall we've managed to achieve what we want to, to achieve with We've spent money, but we haven't spent as much money as we thought we were going to. Oh, well, we're just at a, a neighbouring um, yacht. But look at this. Salty lass. Um, with our... Where are we? Yeah, with our position. And... Oh, there it is. There is our MMSI number. But that is the main thing, look at that salty lass. So I've got all this network cable to run and we're hoping it's long enough. <laughs> it should be. We've got, um, was it the nine metres? got nine metres, so it's as long as the boat. Yeah. And we, we only have to go halfway up the boat. Yeah, we bought nine metres of um, blue <laughs> network cable, so it should be okay. Yeah. Fortunately, we had a spare connection free in our SeaTalk NG network, so we started running the cable around the boat. So I'm in the uh, starboard locker. 
and um, as Bev says this is our Namiya um, 2000 uh, network coming through um, and uh, any minute now I'll be pushing it through there once I've got it all sorted for Bev. Yeah. Well, while I've been messing about in the starboard blocker, Beverly has uh, pulled the network cable through the uh, toilet, behind the toilet and uh, into underneath the sink. So she's a speedy Gonzales, I tell you now. Ah, but mm -hmm. I cheated. Oh yeah. Last time we ran cables, we left a mycine line in. Ah. So if you just move into the heads or out of the way. So you can see we have this lovely little bit of paracord and it runs all the way round up there and into um, where this had to come. So here is the data cable, the blue one, coming through and it will now be going on a bit of a journey into the darkness beyond. <laughs> Welcome to the Shovel Central. <laughs> This is the rest of our network cable, isn't it, Bev? It is indeed. These white ones are the data connectors that go into devices, and the blue ones form the backbone of the CTOC NG network, which is just another NEMEA 2000 thing. And this is the Terminator. So one of these will go into our Garmin GPS, and the other one, this one here, will be attached like so, and go into the back of the um, AIS unit. So all we've got to do now is make sure that these lengths are long enough to get from where we've brought the main backbone to get to the Garmin. So that's the next job. Yeah. So what are you using, Beverly? The mousing line that we put in. Look at that. Yeah. Um, as I say, we leave our mouse. And once we've got a mousing line in, we leave it there. We leave it there because it's just far too, too useful, useful not to have it. Absolutely. Um, you know, so it's just having these things is what you need. Totally. Ah, there it goes. And, and Beverly has now wired in the first little bit of our backbone. Can yep. you see it? Um, I'll it's, give you a bit more light there. Yeah. Uh, Beverly, I would suggest that you have the other one cable going through um, here because at the moment. It does, it goes back into there. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, the cable does go through there. Yeah, so, so that can now go in like so. And there we go. It's and um Then we'll, it's just a matter of drawing the cables back. And she'll have the we'll have that just there. Yeah. So we can still at least access it. Yeah, so that can come. <laughs> like so. This I'd... is what we call, this is why we always say that life on a boat is awkward. There we go. Hey, it's in. It's in. Yeah. So, and then that comes out here and goes into the AIS unit. So that's coming out uh, here and it's going Can into... Can you see the AIS? Because you've no light. Yeah. So that's in there. That's much better actually. And that'll be coming through to here. Uh, we're now going to install our aerial and uh, Beverly and I were discussing where we wanted the aerial and she was worried about shadows going onto our solar panels. So I said if we put the bracket uh, so it was down, um, most of the aerial would actually be below the solar panels. So you won't get, you'll only have about this much that will ever cast a shadow. So uh, that's exactly what we're going to do. And are we going to do a botch job of it today? It's going to be a, um, not a botch job, but it's going to be a, uh, a dry fit. And then we'll put in a nice piece of wood um, because we need to varnish the wood um, to go out, out, out there in um, all sorts of weather. But basically, while the transom's a bomb creator, yeah, we're uh, we're, go we're going to feed it through today, even though we don't have anything to mount it on just yet. Yeah, because um, we've already run the um, data cable, and then we realised we've got all the boards up. So we might as well run so the we aerial cable. So might as well yeah. run the aerial cable. Otherwise, we've got to put it all back. Oh, just, you just got to think about what you're doing and how you're doing it. So that's what we're doing. When a boat project is in full swing. 
This is the travesty known as our cabin. <laughs> I can't even see a single surface. It's got that much stuff. I'm rolling? Yeah, I'm rolling. In case you're wondering what that's for. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Beverly Bond, 007. <laughs> so I've installed the, uh, the thingy, the... Um, grommet. Right, the grommet, as you can see here. And um, it's got the sun in my face. Uh, I've now got to do the worst job ever. And drill yet another hole in poor old salty lass. Oh, poor girl. I started the nerve wracking task of drilling holes in salty lass for the cable plant. That looks reasonably centred, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, Beverly and I were just um, putting the uh, aerial um, through the rubber uh, gasket that we have. And it was so difficult to um, uh, feed it through the gasket, but Beverly came up with a perfect solution. All she did was uh, she put a little bit of oil on the um, uh, tissue, um, and then as I was pulling it on the inside of the transom, Beverly was just slightly oiling uh, the cable as it went through. And I was just able to bring the cable in very quickly. Whereas before, I was only doing like one inch at a time. It was ridiculous. So, oil. And um, use vegetable oil because vegetable oil will degrade and wash off. Whereas mineral oil could degrade the um, coating. But this will just wash off. They'll be fine. It's amazing what you make use of on a boat. Uh, this bit of uh, core was removed to um, fit our pump out facility on Salty Lass, but we're now going to use it. Um, we've also used it as a birthday cake for Salty Lass, but we're now going to use it to mount our new GPS for our AIS. So, um, stuff just gets reused on this boat. So this is the underside of my AIS. I've put that rubber in there. Um, my aerial will go through the hole there. Um, and now I've got, yeah, that should do. So now all I've got to do is attach this to my piece of wood. But I'm going to be clever and I'm going to attach it all off the top of the uh, unit. I'm not happy about that. <laughs> Beverly's not happy about that. She says that I'm... Uh... Why aren't you happy about my idea, Beverly? Because you're not entering into the spirit of boat work. You're making it easy for yourself. It's supposed to be awkward, difficult, contortionist and you're... You're taking the easy way out. It's disgusting. <laughs> and you should be utterly ashamed of yourself. I'm going to have coffee. <laughs> yeah. So this is where we're up to. Um, Beverly has um, wired in the two aerials. The white one is the uh, GPS aerial, while the black one is the uh, VHF radio. Um, and then this rather interesting little jewellery rig is our power cable and um, we will be um, sorting that out as well as our stealth mode. So that's the wiring all done. Um, I've just left these dangling because um, I actually want to keep the little labels uh, just in case we ever need to... Um, wire something else up when you are putting the uh, little junction boxes like this in just make sure that your hinge um goes so that 
it makes maintenance later very easy. So in this case, mine's at the bottom so that I can actually see the connections and do anything I need to do with them. Um, and I'm not trying to juggle because it's upside down. Oh, look at this. We've actually got some information. Mm. Well, we've got our AIS working and we have it plumbed into our data network and um, it's showing up here on the uh, chart plotter. So if you look down here, you can see we've got a couple of vessels anchored out in the lock. They're not going anywhere. They're class one vessels and they're just sitting still at the minute. So they're not showing any tracks, but we can pull up their information and we can have a look. But the thing is, the AIS is working and in a minute, we're going to have a word with Davy on the Queen of Ulster behind me and see if he can pick us up on his AIS. <laughs> Why, but your head looks awful small. Okay, well, I can always change my position. I can always go somewhere else. Just because of the... No, go that way. I'll stand this way. There. No, no, stay down, stay down. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's much better. You're letting... You've, you've got a very high uh, cheekbone. <laughs> but you are at least... Um... People die for these cheekbones. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, we're mega a star. <clears throat> Beep! Let just get your face right, okay. <laughs> Go on then, I'm filming. Beverly and I will be really looking forward to the end. Oh no, it's the Phantom Photographer! <laughs> we're really looking forward <laughs> <laughs> to being at the end of our project. This um, piece of core uh, was what we removed to put in our um... toilet. Oh yeah, pump sorry, light. pump out. Start again. In. Uh, just make sure that the hinge of your um... junction what? boxes. Junction box. Yeah. Thanks. Start again. Beep.